Every day, our body is attacked by several pathogens, bacteria, viruses, several protozoans, etc. Among them, bacteria and protozoans are still manageable. But viruses are pretty dangerous. So, they attack our body and our body's immune system work as a defense system to counter that viral attack. And in this video, we would look at what are the possible ways by which our body can sense a viral attack and what measures does our body take to counter that attack. So the, vi the viruses are like terrorists, which would break the barrier and get inside our body. But you know, our body has patrolling police officer just near our uh, uh, physical barriers, right? So dendritic cells work like patrolling police officers and they can understand that there is an invasion happened by the viruses and all. How does that do so? So see, in the dendritic cell or in the macrophages, they have specific kind of pattern recognition receptors known as toll-like receptors. And some of these toll-like receptors such as TLR3, TLR7 and TLR9, they can understand which DNA is from viral origin. So they are trained to recognize viral tsDNA or tsRNA. And this is how the macrophages or the dendritic cell understand this DNA is coming from a virus and there is a viral attack. Now once they understand that there is a viral attack, what measures do they take? So first of all, they go to the nearby lymph node and alarm the T cells, T helper cells. Now the T helper cells would in turn activate B cells and make them plasma cells. These plasma cells would secrete a hell lot of antibody against specific viral proteins. And the virus would be opsonized by the antibodies. Now viral virus need to interact with the host cell membrane receptors with its surface gly glycoproteins and in order to facilitate the uh, insertion of the virus inside the host cell. But if the virus is already opsonized by the antibodies, the interaction between the host cell membrane and the viral glycoprotein would not occur. As a result, it's hard for the virus to get in. Not only this, many of the macrophages and dendritic cell expresses FC receptor which can bind to the FC region of the antibodies and intake the virus or bacteria and uh, uh, break them apart with digestive enzymes in the lysosome. So the macrophages would intake the virus and they would phagocytose them and degrade them. Now other than macrophages and dendritic cells there are other cells such as CD8 positive killer T cells. They play an important role against the viral protection. So the CD8 positive T cells has specific uh, CD8 co-receptor and they recognize antigens on class 1 MHC. Let's say a virus has infected one epithelial cell marked here in yellow. Now the virus has entered the cell, it would use its host protein synthesis machinery to create viral proteins. Out of mistake, some of these viral proteins would be degraded by the proteasome inside the host cell. And these degraded protein fragments would go inside the endoplasmic reticulum via the TAP transporter and going to be loaded onto the class 1 MHC molecule. Now class 1 MHC molecule generally displays self-antigen and that's a signal that everything is okay inside that cell. But when these viral peptides are also going to be present in class 1 MHC molecule, that sends the signal to the immune system that something is wrong and CD8 positive T cells can detect that, that there is something wrong in, in that cell. And as a result, the CD8 positive T cell gets activated and they are allowed to engage. They secrete specific enzymes known as granzyme and perforin. Now that would induce an apoptotic pathway. 
Now granzymes and perforin as the name suggests, the perforin would create a pore through which the granzymes would go out into the host cell. Now in the host cell it can activate bead or backs which are pro-apoptotic gene. Ultimately it would lead to cleavage of inactive caspase and it would allow inactive caspase to get activated and as a result apoptosis would occur. Also the CD8 positive T cells express FAS ligand which would interact with FAS and also can activate caspase cascade and thereby induce apoptosis and the end result is the death of the target cell along with the death of the virus which were growing inside. Now you might be thinking that okay killing a cell how does that help? Now by killing this cell two important things happen. First of all the virus are inanimate stuff when outside of a host. So first of all their habitat is destroyed where they are growing actively and breeding their habitat is destroyed. Second the dying cell before it dies it sends off an alarming signal and these alarming signals are recepted by the nearby neighboring cells. These alarming signals are known as interferons. As the name suggests, it would interfere with the viral processes and we would look at that matter in details. So the interferons that are secreted from an infected and dying cell would bind to the receptors on the nearby cell, nearby uninfected cell and they would and there is an interferon signaling which would be transduced inside the uninfected cell ultimately it would create some antiviral strategies which would be used by the uninfected cell that such that if these uninfected nearby cells are infected by the viruses that they can easily counteract the attack so the interferon signaling works by jack stat signaling where several jack phosphorylated jack activate stat and stat localize to the nucleus where they give rise to special antiviral proteins right and depending upon the which stat combination it is working on the products are also different for example there are protein kinase r which can interact with viral ds rna and as a result it would the translation it would inhibit the translation now Uh, sorry for that but now then you have other strategies for example you have a uh, 2,5-oligo A synthase which would sort of uh, create a particular protein which would bind to the viral TS RNA and it would inhibit and, and it, it activates a uh, RNA's L family molecule which would chop off the viral genome. Now then there are other possible uh, substances which would block the inhibition of viral assembly and these protein complexes are known as MX proteins. So this is how our interferon based system can interfere with viral defense mechanism. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thank you.